just told Catherine that he really can't let her go. Let's see. You see, Tamika, in your eyes, I feel like I'm somebody worth loving. It's any wonder that I'd like to continue thinking of you fondly. Old habits die hard, I suppose. Catherine bit her lip. Those are impressive words, sire. But do you have a point? A point? It's simple, really. I... I don't think I'll be able to stop my feelings for you. You may reject me as many times as you wish. I'll, it will not change. I've already come to the conclusion that I don't mind. He shrugged. So I suppose that you either get used to me chasing you. Are you given to my dashing, toe-mashing charms? Catherine chuckled despite herself. Or... I could just kill you with the Duke's fashionable face. Please do not give... Please do not give my superiors a pleasure. Or rather, you rip my heart out of my chest and offer it as a Duke, as a sacrifice to the gods. Cory! Very poetic, dashing points for you. You think so? I've been reading a lot of romance novels lately. What kind of romance novels are you talking about? I figured I must learn to be more suave to make the lady of my dreams swoon. Is it working? Catherine laughed. Hardly. I believe this is how they do it in the big finale. Gillian cleared his throat and knelt down on one knee. He took Catherine's hand awkwardly, trying to act as natural as he could. Oh, I'm so happy. His serious face made Catherine burst out laughing. Good fuck. And what were- And what in the world are you doing, idiot? Stop laughing, madame. I must try this at least once. I'm certainly concerned for- Oh. I'm simply cons- I'm simply concerned for an older gentleman and his knee. Will you be able to stand up from that position later, given your obvious grace? Gillian chuckled. Terrible. Dare you call me an old man? I don't look my age, you know. Sure, sure. Oh, stop laughing, will you? I'm trying to concentrate. He cleared his throat again. Will Mademoiselle Catherine Parade allow me audience tonight? As such, perhaps she might allow me to stay by her side for a while longer. It would make me a very happy man. He was sappy and ridiculous, yet hearing the words did stir Catherine's heart. They were giggling like fools now, like children, her heart heavy with love for him. Love? Did she just think love? Of course she did. She had always loved him. Why was she fighting her feelings again? The reason seemed unclear all of a sudden. Sire, your gallantry has convinced this lady to accept your offer for tonight. She bowed with an exaggerated courtesy. Gillian took her hand the theatrically as he stood up. This gentleman was relieved he didn't have to sing. <laughs> A few rules for tonight. As we are in Paris, you must be on your best behavior. No embarrassing jokes like making friends with street lines. Agreed. As such, I must retire by eight. Ten. Eight. Nine thirty. Nine. Take it or leave it. Gillian grumbled, but Catherine just chuckled at his frustration. Nine fifteen it is. Sire, I meant nine sharp. Gillian's face brightened like a little boy's. Oh, I know where we can go. There's a quaint little piazza, just south of here. I have a breathtaking view of the city. They're on a hill, you see. I know the owner personally, so I already guaranteed the best seats. And we serve the best pomme de terre crédit. Croton. Sorry. Potatoes, if you don't speak French. Croton again? If you continue eating that at every opportunity you get, there'll soon be no potatoes left in all of France. Catherine sighed. Why he must be so... 
this better not be a game like you, like all your other flings, sir. I deserve to be treated like more than a prize. But Catherine watched Gillian's face beam as he talked about the little house on the hill. How, when the weather was perfect, the stars would soak the sky. She giggled to herself with fondness. What a dolt. A night in Paris, he would rather eat cheese potatoes. It was just like him to pick the stars instead of the city, wasn't it? I would too. Go on a date with me. <laughs> it pleased her to know she was adored. This side of him the other others did not see. But was this the real him? Did she really see through him like he said? Or was this the face he put on for her sake, like most folks could? If it was, then she had been watching his face since she, this face since she was a little girl. From all to admiration, from friends to lovers, they had seen the best and worst of each other through the years. Surely this was there was something to that. Surely it couldn't all be a lie, right? Sorry, I got carried away. Shall we go? Yes. Catherine grabbed her coat and Gillian took her purse. I almost forgot. Rose is waiting outside. Then let's hurry and meet up with her. I haven't seen her for a long time. I missed her too. It will be a treat to spend the evening with two esteemed ladies. She'll be thrilled to see you. Just like all times, us three. Yes. She slipped her hand on his arm nonchalantly and caught Gillian's smile to himself. At the, at the very least, let that smile be real. Ugh. Oh, that scared me. You're lying! Lady Claudette saw you at Nines. Tears and snot ran down her face. She was holding a vintage 1610 bottle of wine. She gripped the neck of the bottle and flung it to the wall where Gillian was standing. He ducked in just in time to avoid that glass. Cherie! Don't you cherie me, you bastard! Can we not take it out? Can we not take it out on my wine collection again? Catherine threw another bottle in the spot. Stop, Catherine, you're going to hurt yourself. Hurt myself? Like you care. You tell me you're off to Avignon last weekend. Are you really in names? Why are you making this all such a huge deal? So I had to stop off at a neighboring town. That was no... It's a lie if you admit things. I told you at the very start of this relationship, Gillian. I want 100% honesty from you. And I've told you as well. I have a reputation. Rumors follow me. Idol's mouth can't help but chatter. Did you know that Lady Claudette once indecently proposed to me? And right in, right in her husband's birthday gathering as well. So what? It's all beside the point. You know what they say. Where there's smoke, there is fire. How about a name to further the, to further torch the bush? Ugh, I can't pronounce things, I'm sorry. Leanne is a shop girl of the town, a nice girl. Or, at least, I surmise from all those three times I made the mistake to enter her shop, it looks like. Is there anything else you'd like to insinuate? Oh, nothing at all, sire. Why? Is there anything I should know? Gillian sighed and tried to speak calmly. Cherie, I promised you when we got engaged, didn't I? I would be faithful to only you. There's no one else. But Catherine gritted her teeth. Again with this. You're more fake than a monkey spit. Answer me straight away, yes or no. Are you having an affair? Gillian threw his hands up in annoyance. Me? Catherine. Catherine, I am not. I've already answered this. Why does it seem you only hear what you want to hear? I just want to understand everything and make it crystal clear. Is that so bad? Now to explain what Lady Claudette, Lady Claudette, you're taking that bitter, convincing woman, con, convincing woman's word.